Welcome back to the Audio Act Show. Kevin Allison here. Uh, uh, host a show called Risk, where they, uh, you know, dare people to tell crazy stories. And um, I, I tell you, now, uh, you, how many people are in the state? In the state, 11. A real talented group of people. Yeah. I mean, like, really, really funny stuff. Uh, you know, I mentioned the sketch, the, 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 the sketch we talked about before I loved. Tom Lennon doing the, basically a James Dixon impression, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, the, all that stuff, was, it was really funny. Um, now, being a gay guy in that thing, what, were you, was there ever, you seem so, like, fine with it and comfortable in your own skin and everything. Was there ever a time, and you guys went to NYU, epicenter of liberal, but was there ever a time where you really were tortured by that in your life? Oh. About, you know, high school, whatever, I mean. Yeah, when I was a kid. See, I mean, talking to you, it's hard to believe there ever was a time, which is a compliment, but I'm sure there was, right? The, 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 the thing that made it really rough for me was that I was super conscious of it when I was real, real small. When did you figure it out? I mean, I, when I, I remember being five years old and worried about going to kindergarten nope, the next it, year really? because I was like, oh my gosh, people might find out. And I remember the, fir the first day of kindergarten, the first day of kindergarten, we're waiting in line in a single file line to go into the classroom and someone said, Oh, you've got red, red like the head on the uh, on the dog. Uh, and they so they start making fun of me for being a redhead. And I remember feeling like, oh, thank God. They're making fun of that. In your head, you're going, in your head, you're going, guys, you hit the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> you're not even close. Uh. <laughs> I got stuff I can tell you. Uh, wow, so uh, were you so ever you, scared? For physically scared? What? No, I, well, actually, I, I was. I had a little incident in Bushwick recently. Yeah. This crazy Hit old, Bushwick? this crazy old um, uh, Vietnam vet started yeah. attacking me, and I had to get the uh, attacking uh, you the uh, police on him. So he knew. Yeah. He knew. I don't know what it was. He just because yeah, you're not. So, you you couldn't me. tell either way. You're not like you know. You're not Richard Simmons. He just zeroed in. He's just a guy who lives in my neighborhood. Anyway, it was because I grew up so aware of it when I was a kid. Well, well now wait. You, you were five, and you knew that you were attracted to yeah, boys. Yeah, and I like, also... I didn't know I was attracted to anybody when I was five. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm such a horny... <laughs> I, I guess you must are. be. There are <laughs> horny people who are, you know... Yeah. Five, five years old, you and, were lusting after And boys. I knew the words... That's when you should have got the midget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you know, what's so funny is is people were asking me recently after a Rich show, they were all saying, what was your first Hollywood crush? You know, your first, like, movie star crush. And I, mine is Ralph Macchio. Uh, <laughs> no way. But it wasn't Karate Kid. It was when he was, like, on 8 is Enough, which was, like, 1978. And people are like, what kind of pervert are you? He was, like, only 8 years old. I'm like, well, so was I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Well, listen, you know, uh, I just picture this Vietnam vet in your neighborhood, like, with a gun going, I've seen them little people going in and out of your apartment. I'm no dummy. I put two and two together. You two. My fetish is Asian guys. Oh, yeah. Well, I've joined the club. <laughs> Isn't there... <laughs> Isn't there? <laughs> they are. They do tend to be little. They do tend to be little. <laughs> no, is that so true? You like, you, you, you. Yeah, I thought. I thought there was a a big uh, faction of guys who were really into Latino guys. Too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's it's kind of if you look at like stuff like Grinder, the the app on the phone for gay guys to find each other. Like it, it's it's what are they called? It's like a GPS system for everyone who's gay in the neighborhood. <laughs> And I thought it was for butchers, which is why it's on my thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just don't give me any crap. Yeah. But no, people are all are very specific, and they set filters. I only want to find the Latino guys around in the neighborhood, yeah. guys who are between this age and that age. They weigh this. I want a Latino guy. I, I want a, a Latino guy that could fit in a 600-gallon drum. <laughs> <laughs> English optional. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, what, what's, what's that? famous people? Is A Rod hot to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, but, but Ichiro too, Suzuki. But too big. Too big. He's too big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about Ichiro like Suzuki? No, he is. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. You, I'm, I, you guys were talking sports at the beginning. You lose me very quickly. Never yeah. knew a damn thing about it. Right. Well, now, you, you, it, does your gator go up? Because John once told me this in conference. You know, Chad Ochocinco is the <laughs> receiver. <laughs> no. John refers to him as David Beckham dipping chocolate. Do you think that's gay? <laughs> that sounds like a gay reflection. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, now, can you th any stories that you ha heard on the show that uh, even you were like, "Wow, 
I, I don't know if we could, we, we should be talking about it. Yeah, well, you know, there's, because I got into the whole kinky thing, there was um, this, this woman, Melina Williams, she came to, and she told this story, she took like an hour, because some of the stories are told live in yeah. front of an audience, and some are just in my living room. And she came to my house and told me this story about how when she was a little girl, she started, she's a black woman. Right. She started to be turned on by the idea of, you know, uh, BDSM where she's the subservient person. Right. And she started to, over the years, toy with things with friends with playing like she was like a, you know, old uh, slave from oh, the days wow. of American slavery. Oh, wow. And at first, it's really funny. It's just like ridiculous situations where the guys feel really awkward trying out all these expressions yeah, that you yeah, hear but yeah. you've never used. And But then she sets up this thing with this guy who's actually from Tennessee <laughs> and really has the accent and everything. And he, at this dungeon party, his, his plan is to ambush her. He's like, it'll happen sometime in the next few months. Right. You don't know when it's coming. So one night she's at this party, she ends up ambushed, and then all of a sudden she's in this situation. She's not drunk or anything, mm -hmm. but she's in this situation where she's being interrogated and strung up and whipped. And oh my like, God. Yeah, and, and he's using all this terrible old language and really getting at her, and she has a, she, her, so <laughs> part, part of her brain kind of snaps where she forgets about safe words. Yeah, okay. So she starts to really feel like she's in danger and has a totally traumatic experience. Wow. And Maybe the guy's just a good businessman and wants free work. And <laughs> One day she wakes up, sir, it's been eight years, can we stop? <laughs> See, I'd want the direct opposite. I want, I'd want to be Hattie McDaniel. I make the girl Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take another break. Back after the. Welcome back to the Arnie Lyon Show. Uh, during the commercial, John was saying he needs some advice. Yeah. Been, well, I could little use... people porn. I know. Yeah. I, I could always. I feel like I've always had to. Uh, yeah, focus on something that to rough it up a little bit. Yeah. Do you have a, a bit good... overeating? If you went on uh, beer. Kevin, if you went on Kevin's show, is there a story that stands out you could tell? I don't. I don't have any cool exotic. You've got the biggest lie. The biggest lie people. I've ever heard. I've lived. I've lived a very you know modest, boring existence. Yeah, so did Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't. I might be out of them after eight and a half years at Stern. I because I I really you know. I unloaded a bunch of times. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, there, there are, uh, if you want to get deep, like, as far as, like, you know, stuff with my old man and everything, like, he's, he's a quadriplegic, uh, you know, stuff like where you think, uh, was he a good dad, a bad dad, stuff like that. If I really got honest with that, maybe, you know, I yeah. Stopped. Well, some of those stories that we record, like at my house, you know, like I, I, I've over the years, I've become a little bit like a therapist where, you know, you can stop and start the tape and say, now, wait a minute, you know, how do you really feel about right, that? And right. start up again and then edit it together so that it really comes into oh, like yeah. something really. Yeah, there was, there was, the, the, that, that was a true story I was talking about before that. A uh, young lady who did some opium and did some mushrooms and then heard the voice of God telling her to kill her mom. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. But she did that live on stage uh, for, for, the, for a risk she live She took the show. drugs? Oh, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> she told the story. There, there was no mom killing on stage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought maybe she took the drugs again and see what would happen. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I have heard people say that if you take like uh, a certain drug that you, you went through a really, really strange thing with. Yeah. You won't remember it completely until you take that drug again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, really, uh, I had a couple of, you know, crazy trips where you go, if I go back, will it be the worst thing ever? Because you think of the guy from Pink Floyd who never left his house for 50 yeah. years. Yeah. Or will I think discover something that'll make me a happy person? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. not. Kev, uh, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks so the much. show's Risk. Co risk uh, come in anytime. Yeah, Thank really, you. All right. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.